it was a big deal. I mean, you know, um, I had roughly $90,000 canceled. So, wow. you know, it's not insignificant. Hi, Persis. How are you doing today? Hi, Sabrina. I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing well, too. I wanted to thank you for joining me and having this conversation about student loans and the public service uh, loan forgiveness program, PSLF. Um, I think student loan debt is a big conversation right now in the country, and there's so many different repayment programs and options, you know, that are out there, and not many of us know all of them. So um, I have a few questions for you, if that's okay. Um, of course. I'm, so again, my name is Sabrina. I live in New York. I graduated in 2019, and my goal was, is to work with a nonprofit and enroll in public service loan forgiveness, PSLF. Um, so. I've heard that you were one of the few people to be able to be forgiven after many years of being in the PSLF program. So can you tell me a little bit about what you do and how that all worked out for you? Sure, um, happy to happy to talk about it. Um, yeah, so I current I've worked in public service. Well, I worked in public service for a while, but. Um, I graduated from law school in 2009 um, and went to work for a legal services organization right out of law school, actually in New York State as well. Um, and so I, you know, I graduated around the time when right after public service loan forgiveness was was enacted. Um, so I knew about it roughly because, you know, there was buzz in, the, in my law school um, and with folks. So I was fortunate to be able to get enrolled into um, income-based repayment when I was at the legal services program, um, and then you know went to went to work for where I work now, the National Consumer Law Center, where I'm the director of the Student Loan Borrower Assistance Project. Um, and so I'm very intimately aware of the the <laughs> programs that um, that you're required to participate in in order to get public service loan forgiveness, which has been very very helpful in the process. Um, yeah. But you know it required uh, so I've, you know, I got loan forgiveness back in this past April of 2021. Um, so almost 12 years after I started working in public service. So Persis, I know that one of the touchy subjects for borrowers yeah. is their loan servicer. Um, a lot of borrowers have had such bad experiences where their loan servicer has told them to enter into a forbearance or, you know, just it, it has caused them more harm than than help. So can you tell me a little bit about your experience with yours and if they were helpful during PSLF? Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could say that I had a better experience with my service or, or that like knowing what I should do, you know, I mean, I'm sure knowing what I should do did help ultimately, but it still right. wasn't enough in, in a lot of circumstances. You know, I initially had, um, ACS Xerox as my servicer um, back before the current servicers. Uh, and, you know, um, I, I don't think I ever got, you know, documentation about recertifying my annual income. Um, and then when I finally was transferred to, to Fed Loan Servicing, you know, they had, I, I submitted my employment certification form, um, like, you know, like they suggest that you do. And of course they miscounted the number of payments that I had made, um, yeah. which was a, which was a nightmare to get through. Um, again, you know, with annual recertification, they would send me the notice and um, I would respond like within a week and then they would, it would take them months to process. And so then my, you know, the amount that I, uh, was told to pay each month, jumped up to the standard payment amount. Um, and so they put my loans in a forbearance. <laughs> um, right. And, you know, it was, it was frustrating because again, I, I do know what to do in those circumstances. You know, I talk to the supervisor, I say, you know, I want to make sure that my interest doesn't capitalize during this time when you put me in a forbearance. Um, I mean, I'd like you to process my application a little faster right. too, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, but if nothing else, I want to make sure that my interest doesn't capitalize. And, you know, the service, the, the supervisor literally told me like, what does it matter? Your loans are going to be forgiven. Um, you know, it's like, well, I don't want my balance right. to grow, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was, that was some of the, every year for a while, the annual recertification process dragged on when repay became an option for borrowers, you know, um, I enrolled, I changed repayment plans and enrolled in that. And it took 
it took almost half a year to get enrolled. Um, in fact, it took so many, it took so long that my loan status actually went into delinquency. When I graduated from school, one of the issues that I faced was um, they immediately put you into the standard program, the standard 10 year mm. program. And mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that. No one had ever told me about the different plans available. So I graduated and I saw the amount that I had to pay and I could not make that. I didn't have a job. Yeah. I didn't have, a, you know, something that I could pay. I, there was no way that I could, you know, ask my parents for that. It just wasn't possible. So I had to go into a forbearance and it wasn't until someone told me about it that I then enrolled into the income-based repayment program. And that like helped me because I wasn't working a job. So my monthly payments were then zero. So then I didn't, I wasn't working, so I didn't have to make the payments and it still was counting. So I think awareness about all of this is so important. And even just thinking about the fact that you work with student loans and yeah. you work in that field and you still had a challenging time just like makes me wonder how borrowers who might not know or have this knowledge, how they're doing it and how their loan servicers are dealing with their own accounts. So that's something that really worries me. And I think one of the things you touched upon was um, annual recertification. Mm -hmm. um, so are there any other like tips or anything else that you have to do to make sure that you qualify for PSLF? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I, I, I'll just to echo your worries, like I am very worried almost every single time I feel like I've picked up the phone to talk to a customer service representative about my own loans, I, I feel like I've gotten bad information. Um, and, you know, so I do worry a lot about the information that folks are getting. Um, and, and just to say, I mean, I'll give you, I will give tips, I promise. Um, okay. <laughs> but but uh, I, I want to start with, you know, like it shouldn't, it, it shouldn't be the borrower's responsibility to know how to do everything right on their own, right? right? Like this is yeah. why we have servicers. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, but there are things that people should know to protect themselves. I mean, I think one of the things that very, one of the pieces that is very concerning to me, and this is as now, now a little bit more as a lawyer than as um, yeah. my own. Uh, but, you know, like, but keeping accurate records, um, you know, like only specific types of payments qualify. And it's really important to know which ones are which. And um, so I have requested my own, you know, payment histories and I've not gotten them. Um, or, you know, I tried to, when I had the problems with, you know, the, the count, I got this record um, of my payments that I'd made through ACS and it was, mm -hmm. It, it was basically nonsense. It didn't make any, you know, it was not readable to a normal human. Wow. So, you know, unfortunately, I think folks do need to take care of themselves and know that they, you know, know what payments they actually made because they, because there's all sorts of criteria, right? You have to yeah. make it at the right time in the right mm -hmm. plan, you know, of the right amount while, you know, like simultaneously while you're working, like all of these different criteria have to be met simultaneously. Um, and the servicers aren't keeping those records for you. Um, so I think that's number one is making sure that you have a handle on these payment histories. And I think that's, you know, public service loan forgiveness or or any program. I think it's still useful to know, to have that information and know that, you know, your servicers records might not be all that helpful if you need them. Um, but, but annual recertification is also really important to keep in mind because there are so many traps that borrowers can fall into. Um, and knowing that, you know, you're going to have to do it every year um, and keeping track of those dates, you know, they're, they don't give you a lot of notice. And I think this is one place where I have seen borrowers um, kind of get in trouble because they, they see the first notice and then they assume that there will be another notice because it, there's so much time between, right. you know, it's like you have 60 days to do this thing. Well, if you're giving me 60 days, I assume you're going to tell me when we get a little bit closer to the actual yeah. date. And, and that doesn't necessarily happen. Um, so, so, you know, acting on the first notice you see and looking for it, because, you know, it can go to your spam folder, it can get lost. And I don't know, I, I get hundreds of emails every day, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's just so easy for it to get lost. And I see that happen to folks every day. And, um, and the, the consequences are, you know, like, your payments will jump, your interest will capitalize. Um, and, and it can have, you know, long term effects down the road. And so being one of the lucky people who has had yes. their debt <laughs> canceled or forgiven, how does that feel? I mean, I can't even imagine if, you know, how does that feel for you? And 
And how do you think that people, or how would the country as a whole progress and feel if their yeah. debt was canceled as well? Because I know that individually, it's very easy for us to, you know, say like, oh, like the burden's off my shoulders. But mm -hmm. as a whole country, there are so many benefits to debt cancellation and it, yeah. not just the borrowers, the economy. So what are your thoughts on all of that? It has been really framed to not have, you know, um, have those payments. Um, you know, I have kids. Um, and so like, they're really expensive too, you know, um, <laughs> We, uh, you know, we actually like probably one of the most like tangible experiences is that, you know, we, we just bought a house and like not having Congratulations. that. Thank you. <laughs> you know, not having, um, not having that debt has meant that we could afford, you know, we could afford a bigger mortgage, like, you know, looking very closely at our debt to income ratio. Um, it's, it was a big deal. I mean, you know, um, I had roughly $90,000 canceled. So, wow. you know, it's not insignificant uh, on, on the larger scale, right? Like student loan debt really is sucking up a lot of resources from a lot of folks. Um, I think a lot of folks have the, like, this is what I would do if I didn't have to yeah, pay this, right? Definitely, like, yeah. I, you know, I think, I don't know. I don't, I think a lot of folks in, in my generation and, and yours, like, we should be saving for retirement, right? Like, yeah. like we're yeah. not investing in ourselves um, because we're still paying, paying it off. Um, so, you know, I don't know, like, like what would it mean for you to, to not have these payments every month? Oh, I know that that would be like so freeing and so helpful. I mean, I'm a first generation college yeah. graduate and, you know, my parents are immigrants and they don't have a lot of wealth, just like a lot of people of color. We know that the racial wealth gap is just, you know, it's huge between black and white borrowers. So mm -hmm. for me, it would just mean being able to contribute to my family, being able to yeah. have a little bit more financial freedom to invest in like the local economy, to buy a yeah. car or, you know, something along those lines, home ownership for, for me. And for a lot of people, it's be, being able to build wealth generationally right. and just right. being able to pursue your dreams, you know, just travel or, you know, do what it is that you would like to do. The American dream is you know, it's available to all of us, but student loan debt is really holding back millions of people and not just the borrowers, but their families. As you said, you have yeah. kids, there's people that want to invest and start right. families, get married, buy homes. There's so many things that it's holding us back from. So for me and for millions of people, I believe it would be so freeing and it would just be something that would help the economy and it would yeah. help individuals and families. And I think that's so important. And we have to recognize that. Um, as a, as a whole, I know women, um, people of color and low income communities are mostly impacted. So um, I always like to, you know, bring that into um, consideration as well, because I think it, it also means a lot for us to speak up for, for people, um, for borrowers whose voices, you know, need to be amplified. So I think that's super important. I think that's super, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Um... And, you know, I mean, I think one of the things that has really been highlighted with like the payment pause is that like so many people, like, I mean, our, so many people's wages just aren't really sufficient, right? Um, right. An income during payment, I think it's really important to have something that, you know, has a more affordable option, but it doesn't take into account, right? Like that there yeah. are, there are a lot of first generation students who are helping to support their families, right? It right. doesn't take into consideration the like differences in all of our, our circumstances. Um, and that that really does impact a lot of, um, you know, low income communities, communities of color a lot differently. Um, and I think it's so important to, to realize that like, because so many people's budgets do really push against the outer edges, right? Like really right. most of us have really more expenses than we have um, income. And so yeah. by not, you know, by not paying your student loan debt, doesn't mean that you're just like flush with money. It means that you're now finally covering the things that you've been ignoring, um, you know, for the rest of time. Um, I just wanted to thank you again. I think, um, having conversations like this and, you know, just talking about the programs that we have like PSLF and talking 
about how debt cancellation would impact borrowers is so important. And this is a conversation that I think we have to continue having until the, the system is fixed and until people are yep. able to get their debt canceled yep. after investing so much time and so much energy in public service and to help others. It's something that's so important. So thank you again. My pleasure.